Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we are once again on Cataclysm Ridge, but we will be seeing God versus Kron Aberrant. And Kron Aberrant is starting with CISO. Normally he plays Grekum, but going for CISO. God also going for CISO. Might go for Grekum, but I think the... Actually, no. The players did arrange in advance to just play CISO first, so I'm assuming God is going to honor that. So this would probably be a CISO versus CISO, which we... I don't remember the last time we've seen a CISO mirror. I really don't. And I know that they were planning on trying that because Cronenberg wants to play CISO, wants to see how they work. Because there was a lot of CISO play back before all the economy changes, and it was largely CISO that motivated the economy changes. But it's really interesting to see what CISO is like now that the economy has been changed. I mean, what is it like now? Is it actually... Is it viable? Was the economy nerfed too much? Was the economy nerfed the right direction? Is there another way of getting around it if there are weaknesses? So, it'll be interesting to see what comes up. Crown starting out with a very early factory, and God, on the other hand, starting out with three RPs and an importer. It's a typical start build for CISO. Crown definitely very focused on getting a rush from the looks of it, probably getting very early ATHCs. Actually, almost definitely. He is. If he was going for QP, I would guess Lancers, but since they agreed in a CISO mirror, it's not actually... A that's a bit of a toss-up, actually, but both ATFCs and Lancers will be effective enough against each other that it doesn't matter a whole lot. It probably does make a difference, but it's not, for example, against Vecchio or Grekum, where going early Lancers would be interesting, to say the least. Because, one, on the one hand, Zion Pulses and Octos cannot hit air, but on the other hand, Zion Pulses and Octos can just ignore air and walk right past it, killing all your base stuff. Thus, it's a little bit tricky. Anyway, Crown getting his scouts over to the south while the... Oh, where is it? while the special ops from God and the Marine as well going over to scout out a bit as well. So both players are getting their early scouting going on. God very quickly getting a special ops up the back door, but it's going to be just able to get through the Marine. So that Marine's processor is going down shortly. Crown is not building anything yet, but he is not focused at this point in time. This is the 305 mark. Back at the 136 mark, Crown is building ATHCs. So that will confirm what that was going to be. Able to get rid of one of the Marines. So God losing a Marine here, and... The Special Ops avoiding that path, however. The ATHC will intercept, and that will get rid of it. Anyway, God, from his point of view, he's losing the, the Special Ops to the ATHC. The ATHC not taking a whole lot of damage. About half health, but for Special Ops... Special Ops are very powerful, actually, so that's not terrible. They have a lot of attack power. Like I said before, infantry attack power was massively buffed in the last patch. Just their speed and range was not, because that's meant to be their role is slow. Still not sure I agree with that, but that's the way it was done. Anyway, God jumping back right at the beginning of the match, and doesn't look to be changing too much other than where his units were going, probably. Getting Marine into the main base, and that's now dealing some damage. Getting at the Importer, while the ATC goes south to intercept the Special Ops, and yeah, this Marine here is going to be dealing some meaningful damage. The ATC, of course, out of position to defend that, but at the same time, Kramer probably will be building another ATC very shortly. And back up to the 158 mark. See, Crown is coming in, just making sure that God has not taken this expansion. God has not taken either expansion. Neither player has taken any expansions. At this stage in the game, there is no expanding to be done. Because of the economy nerf that I mentioned before. I think even in the old economy, two minutes would have been a bit too early to get expansions going. But maybe getting one or two RPs out actually wouldn't have been implausible. Anyway, Crown Aberrant is set up nicely to intercept if needed. While God, it's hard to tell what he's up to because most of his infantry are out of position. They're just out across the map. From his point of view, or this is the present point of view, from his point of view at the 58, 58 second mark, he is keeping one Marine at home and has not changed this Marine up to the north, keeping it doing what it's doing. Special Ops, however, going to the north and will be attacking straight from the north from the looks of it. While Crown Aberrant sending out the rest of his forces over along the south and not changing much here from the looks of it. At the 243 mark, however, he just healing himself up and will be probably attacking shortly. This wouldn't be a bad time, well, it would be a iffy time to attack due to the distance from the unplayable past, but when it gets, when the unplayable past gets there, it wouldn't be a bad time to start an attack on the main base. And God getting his infantry, special ops, and marine over to the north, attacking south from there, but is he committed to it? No, he's not attacking with both the special ops and the marine. The special ops probably wasn't properly ordered to do so, but he does have a proxy factory. There is God's factory. Getting that built up, right? Actually, not sure if I could call it proxy. I think it's nearer. Yeah, it's slightly nearer. It's out of base, at least. 
It is slightly nearer to Crown Aberrant than it would have been in God's main base, but it is a little bit awkward. Anyway, ATT coming to the north. The most important part, however, is the fact that it's to the north, and thus it'll go down south from the top of the base, and Crown is not really prepared to defend that. He does have some infantry up to defend against this, and actually, in addition to the infantry he has normally, so he's been... He's actually building a fair amount of infantry. For defense, like I said, they aren't too bad, but that's mainly because the range advantage gets a bit nullified since they have their base to work around and they can use the buildings as cover. And of course the buildings, well, okay, they, their spotting doesn't really help them, but it's, at the very least, it does allow for a better maneuverability because they can at least choose where they're going to fight and choose the angle they're going to come from and they know where their enemies are at the time. Anyway, God getting up an ATC, getting up a second ATC, Kronenberg not building more ATHCs, and I'm a little bit surprised at this. I mean, he doesn't have, he does have the money for it, but he is not going for that. Instead, choosing entirely to go for infantry, using all of his reserves on infantry. And here we go, at the Unplayable Past Edge, it looks like he is going for that attack. So getting that edge attack in, God at the Unplayable Past Edge himself, he is attacking as well as both players going for an edge attack, but it looks like God's edge attack is going to be repelled before well, Kronhammer's edge attack is going to be able to get through for free. There's nothing in God's base defending against this. So Kronhammer actually has a pretty good chance here. God, however, does have a larger army coming from the north and does have ATHCs continuing to come in. So it's going to be quite risky. This is actually a pretty good timing since... I mean, okay, Kronhammer does have his army destroying God's base. but And getting rid of the importer, so God cannot build any more ATHCs. His production line is completely destroyed. And another ATHC coming up from Kronhammer, so that is a definitely good idea. And... God probably got something up his sleeve right now. He does have a couple ATHCs still. He's going to be able to push through this base if he wants to. But Crown Aberrant putting himself in a very good position with that Importer Destruction. The Armory Destruction is not really relevant, but the Importer is huge. Because that means, of course, that God has really no way of building any more units. He has this ATHC coming up. He still has another couple ATHCs coming up, so it's not completely over, but he does have no Importer at this point, and no Armory either. Only RPs and a Factory. And those RPs are not harvesting at this point, so if Crown Aberrant can capitalize on this, build up a slightly larger army... No, move back! He has to move back, get ATC out of the way, if he builds a slightly larger army. But at this point, God is just going for this timing, and it's a really good timing, too. These forces are getting themselves killed before they can actually do anything, and being in base not helping them, not moving back enough and picking their battles well enough. And Crown is still destroying God's base, but God also destroying Crown Aberrant's base, or at least dealing some damage to it. But... Thankfully, the arrangement of the base means that God's going to have a harder time getting to that importer and getting rid of it. And the ATHCs here are really going to be this key strength, but even with that, the only thing you can really do is decoy. But the special ops acting as decoy, the ATHCs pretty much even health attacking each other. If there's another infantry coming up, or another anything coming up, really, it could turn the tide. But it looks like God is actually going to be able to just eke out a victory at this point. And Crown Aberrant very focused on getting rid of the RPs here. Now, of course, Crown Aberrant can come around and destroy this, but if he loses his production capacity, which he's just lost his armory, he still has an importer, but that importer's going to be going down within a few seconds. And another ATHC coming up. The last one's going to be built. No more... That's gone. That reserve is gone. There are still marines here, so another importer could be built over in the corner of the map. Would be a really good idea, too. I recommend Crown Aberrant does that if he... If more fact, this is a replay, and thus he cannot do that. But in general, wouldn't be a bad idea to build an importer just in the corner of the map. Now that he's basically taken over God's side of the map, and this factory is the only thing God has... But he does not do that. He does have another ATHC coming up. This ATHC will die. It's going three on one. Getting rid of one of them, but still two on one. Going down. There's no healing, of course, for God. But at the same time, there's no importer or anything for Crown Aberrant. So Crown Aberrant's only real strength is that he can get rid of this factory and still has an ATHC running around. So it's really... Crown Aberrant has a slight advantage just in the fact that he is able to rebuild. However, God is also in a capacity to rebuild someone. He does have... He has an RP moving towards the northwest side of the map, and an ATC looks like it's trying to hunt it down, but also trying to hunt down that Marine, going towards the natural expansion. If it hunts down the RPs, then God has no chance. Crown Aberrant will be able to rebuild, and then will be able to take care of these two ATCs. Of course, that's assuming he can do it in time. But God, how are managing to get one RP on Liquid Crystal, and another one will be going on Q-Plasma. So Crown Aberrant still has a timing advantage at this point, but this factory going down shortly, and this importer will not be able to build up I don't think he can get a reserve in time. From the looks of it, unless Crown Aberrant goes back, he did build it a bit sooner, but this is still going to be another 50 seconds or so. And this factory will not survive 50... It won't survive 10 seconds. It's dead, actually, right now. So that's not going to work out very well. If Crown Aberrant builds another factory, which he doesn't have the money to do, unfortunately. But if he does build another factory, 
He could deal with this, but he needs to get rid of that import, that RP. That's the biggest thing he needs to get rid of. And there was some construction going on here. It looks like Kramer actually managed to save two of his RP, so he's good for his own resources. And an importer coming up here, but God can't really do anything with that importer. I'm a little bit surprised that he has built that. I really don't know why he did that. Although, it looks like he is chasing after the RPs, so these RPs won't be able to do anything. Kranimer losing them, and he can't do anything about this either, because he's too far in the past for it to matter. But he is moving to defend, and actually, this might be why he built the Importer for just delaying Kranimer's forces. But it looks like God will actually be able to recover from this, having two of his RPs set up, and he does have the... He does have the Importer now, but he doesn't have any factories being built up, but really it just comes down to which player manages to build a factory first, and it looks like Kranimer having a slight economic advantage will be able to do this, and, sorry, God having a slight economic advantage, though, Kronheimer does have a QP advantage. He could convert and use that to build another resource processor, and then use that, or just use it to build a factory, and then use the factory. No, he's building an armory. Why is he building an armory? That was a bad idea. Factory would have been a much better idea, because the factory would have allowed him to get another ATHC. ATHC, the two ATHCs and a special loss would beat two ATHCs, but at this point... It's not going to work out. A factory coming up. God will be able to win this game. This factory is going to win him the game because this HHC will die. Cranmer will lose that. Some slightly better micromanagement might have handled that, but really, Cranmer just... Why did he build an armory? The factory is really the better choice. So both players rebuilding, but God making the better choice on rebuilding. Though he did lose his importer, so he needs to build another one, but he has the money to do it. 100 resources, he can easily build another one, which he's doing right now, actually. So both players rebuilding, but God just managing to rebuild faster, rebuild smarter. And from here, he's just going to win the game. And there's really nothing Kronhammer can do at this point. And Kronhammer throws in the towel! And Kronhammer mentioning in chat, the resources were too tight to produce off a factory, but you had enough QP to get two ATHCs. You could have built two. And that's all you would have needed. Actually, you could have built one, and that's all you would have needed. But I guess you didn't know that. I mean, admittedly, wouldn't have had the information about what is available, what God has... But, yeah, smarter rebuilding by God, and smarter evacuation by the resource processors of God. And that's the game. So, hope you enjoyed that. We'll be back shortly with third and last game for tonight. So, stay tuned.